So we're here talking about Two Distant Strangers, um, a film which um, I was I was introduced to this film by my friend Lawrence Bender who produced it, but I actually also saw it on the Academy screening room. Um, so I saw it twice and then I saw it a third time yesterday because I absolutely love this movie. So um, welcome uh, Martin and Trayvon. And um, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit, I guess, about um, how you accomplish this, especially during COVID, which apparently you did, right? Yeah. So Thanks so much, Dean, for doing this. Oh, you're welcome. welcome. So my, my first question is actually, because this is, I, I, to me, this is such a brilliant way to use the structure of Groundhog Day to, to, to actually tell this, um, this both uh, disturbing and also um, um, involving story that also has comedic tones to it. Um, it's it's a it's a brilliant structure. How did how did this come? How did you guys come up with this idea, Trayvon? I guess it's you. Um, yeah, I mean, I last summer was so you know crazy for everyone, and it was so emotional. And uh, you know, I was going to protests with Lawrence, and sometimes with you know just me and my girlfriend. Sometimes Martin was out there, and we were all you know just taking in what was going on. It was everyone's kind of first chance to get outside of the house. Yeah, I remember we were all masked up, but it was, yeah. yeah. And it's so the first time we're all together someplace. Right, exactly. So everyone was probably really excited to, to do that and have a purpose to do something. Yeah. And, you know, after internalizing the repetition of the stories that were coming out and uh, with Brianna and Ahmad and George and, and Elijah McClain and all these different you know, narratives that we kept seeing happen. And it was, for me, just reliving the rep repetition of the feelings you feel each time you hear a new name, a new story, and how you have to go through the cycle of processing those emotions. And, and, and then it just, I got the idea, I was watching the news one night and I just, I think I said out loud to Zaria, you know, like, this feels like the worst version of Groundhog's Day you could imagine. And, uh, and then I was like, oh, I should like, I wonder if I could write that into something or like make some type of short, you know, film with that concept and, you know, just to express what it feels like to live that. And then I told Martin about it and he got excited about it and we were already working on another movie together and we just kind of put that aside because we felt like this was important enough to, you know, be made and, and be out into the world right now as soon as possible while we were all kind of living this experience as as a globe essentially because yeah. it had spread across the world and so we felt like you know pandemic be damned we we were going to find a way to tell this story uh, it's it's really uh an incredible accomplishment i have to say um, i i'm also uh have to say that it's completely relatable to everyone um you 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 go through the same emotions that that your character or your protagonist is going through each time and now it's there's even you have the foreboding of it happening again which is even stronger um, each time it happens it's like oh god i can't go through this again um, it's the same feeling as you're describing it that i had that it well actually for the last five years every time i heard a story like this yeah um, it, it's quite amazing was it um, how long did it, it did it take you to to actually write the, also your to write the script, but also you're talking about a short film, which is uh, structurally a very different thing than a than a feature. Yeah, um, it's a it's a, it's a, an art form unto itself, um, and this is an incredibly successful at doing that in a in a very short period of time. You've not just made your point, but it's very emotional. So, um, yeah. um, and and at the end, hopeful. I think. Um, yeah, I mean, that's completely like I, I wrote it in five days and everything you described, you know, that's just not fair. To, <laughs> <laughs> five days. I, to be fair, I have a for a half hour script. I have a lot of practice in TV writing, so I'm used to writing. Oh, that's right. Dude. Yeah, you have it as possible. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, the all of that, the the execution and the technicality and the the you know perfection of 
the format, I think that's all due to Martin and how well he just knows, you know, not only how to structure something like a short film, but, you know, as a doc maker, he's very in tune to emotions and how to capture them and what, what you need to do in order to grab people. And so, you know, that was a big part of us, you know, structuring uh, how we shot the movie and how we would, you know, what it would look like and what it would feel like and how it would cut together and what we would leave on the cutting room floor and what we would, you know, um, things we, we spent a lot of time discussing would stay in the film. And so it was, I think that was just purely, I could not have done that on my own. Um, it, it's, and, it's beautifully made. Is it, what, was it your intention from the start? And it, of course it makes perfect sense when you see the movie for uh, to mostly be for a person. Um, it's in his point of view. Yeah, yeah. We'll get you, Martin. Yeah. Talk about, like, uh, oh, yeah, go on. I, I enjoy your dulcet tones. I, I <laughs> love it when you praise me. I, uh, I mean, it was, yeah, it was important that, you know, people experience this from his point of view and, and you live in the feeling and the, the, the trauma that he's experiencing, you know for the 28 minutes of the actual film that you're going through, we want you to feel like you're in Carter's clothes, that you're in his, you're living in his experience. And I think we we executed that to the best of our ability. Oh, it's beautifully done, really, absolutely beautifully done. Um, was there a discussion about um, uh, that from the very beginning? Was it always absolutely the most important thing that you, you you put the audience in his point of view like that or think, did it change? No, yeah, I think that was something, you know, beyond the script. I think that was something Martin thought would be really impactful in terms of shooting the movie. And I mean, cause you could easily shoot this in coverage like a half hour TV show, but yeah, that's you know, right. Like Martin. You can... the, the, when John brought it to me, you know, he brought it to me before he'd written a word. And um, so part of the reason, that we did. I made a short film that got nominated eight years ago. Uh, Facebook told me this morning it was eight years ago today that we, I was at the Academy Awards with another short. Um, so I have experience in this world, and and so I've uh, since that time a lot of people have sort of pitched shorts to me to sort of do it first times, and I was like, you don't want to do a short film, not really. <laughs> they're so they're so unlikely to be good. Um, and if they're you know if you make a mediocre feature film, you've still got a product. If you make a mediocre short film, you really you really that's a lot of time that you're never going to get back. Um, and uh, but he pitched me as two line thing, you know, it's it's Groundhog Day, uh, but a black man that gets killed every day by the same police officer. And I was like, what was fascinating to me is obviously the you know, there's, a, there's a simple beauty to what's said there because I think it elevates for the first time ever the Groundhog Day formula, which has now been used so many times, right? There's so many iterations of it, variations of it, but never before has it been elevated to this level of meaning. It's That's usually, right. It's, yeah. play, it's it's a play. It's an by nature, it's a playful conceit, right? It's a it's a stock. It's a stock setting. Who are you going to put in that stock setting? What are they going to find love? Are they you know? And this was suddenly one where it took that stock and see, and it made it, it's, it, it elevated it beyond, I mean, it, it created something totally new out of it. And so from the minute he told me that, I realized that we had, you know, because obviously last year, all of us, everybody with a heart and a soul wanted to find a way to use their talents to communicate around yeah. the way that this country was tearing itself apart. And, um, uh, and he said those lines, I was like, okay, that's it. And I really, you know, and, and the, the, we did. We went over a lot of variations of discussions, particularly around the ending, particularly around um, how, how, to what extent the cop was a character and what his point of view was and who he was and how it was going to resolve and how, you know, how to elevate him past um, simply being a device into a, into a person and what we hit on, which you know, without ruining it, we were very pleased with because it's, it's the only moment. Um, his character reveal is the only real moment of a shift in perspective. It's the only moment where the film, in the car ride, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah, the car ride and the immediate aftermath of that, like, and that you know that shift in perspective gave gives it so much more gravity, gives it so much more weight um, to that moment, and I think helps with the um, with the the artifice that we're doing there, trying to convince you of one thing and re revealing something else. You know, is, was it? Um, 
uh, with casting it hard because it, it's it's beautifully cast and and performed. Um, and I, it's so we all know how important casting is. And and um, how did had you how did you come to uh, to that cast? And and can you talk a little bit about working with them? Yeah, I mean Andrew, I've known for a couple of years. Andrew Howard, who plays the cop, and I immediately knew, you know, when I started forming the idea in my head, I wanted him to play the cop because he's just so good. Yeah, yeah he's <laughs> at that. Like he just he's so good at that, and you know, he's in you can he's in Watchmen and Tenet and Limitless and Perry yeah. Mason, and you see he he has such a great range for those kind of things and so I immediately knew I wanted Andrew to be the cop so I asked him he said yes before he even read us read the script and then um with Joey uh I I found Joey through my friend James Samuels who you know is a great director and you know recently just directed The Heart of They Fall for Netflix and Mm -hmm. um he he auditioned Joey for his movie and they couldn't make it work for scheduling but you know when I told him I was looking for you know, that lead actor, he said, you know, Joey would be perfect for this. And I was like, I don't know Joey Pettis. Like, how am I going to get? So he's like, he's like, give me a few minutes. And he calls me back on three-way FaceTime with Joey. And Joey is saying he'll do the movie. And I'm like, what just happened oh in my that God. span of time that you got Joey to say yes without even reading the script? And so I sent him the script after he'd already said, yeah. And he was like, this is exactly the kind of stuff I want to do. And so we had Joey and Zaria, you know, uh, is my partner and, and she is, you know, a fantastic actress. And I see her <clears throat> act all the time because, you know, she does her auditions and now everything is on Zoom and self tapes. So I, it was an easy choice. To <laughs> realize. Yeah, that, you didn't have to go far for that choice. Yeah, yeah that, to go that, very that far that. <laughs> but I, I, it, It's beautifully cast. Their performances are, are, are terrific and, um, Especially because he's such, he feels like a, an everyman, you know, it's, uh, uh, which is what's so important, I think, for, for was from my experience, that yeah. I, I completely related to him on every level. And then, and, and you don't expect what happens to him to happen to him, which is also, I think, uh, important in your setup. And it's, uh, I, th- I thought it was beautifully done. It what was, was what, how many, uh, th- then you had to fund it. How did you do that? <laughs> Oh, the fun part. That was no fun. <laughs> Begging letters, outreach, um, and also sort of deciding like this. So one of the key parts of the story, honestly, is that uh, Trayvon sort of pitched me this thing and was like, do you think we can do this thing? Can we can we get it done in time to submit it for the Academy Awards? Well, and not just there, you're in the middle of COVID. I mean, middle of COVID, middle of the summer. I wouldn't have gone out and done that. It's, oh, it's like, I was like, there's no way, dude. There's absolutely no way. I was like, because you can write it really quickly and we can probably cast it really quickly. I said, but like fundraising always just takes forever. And I actually had a, I had a once in a blue moon phone call right on the same day that Trayvon pitched the idea. And if the next phone call was somebody, it was some sort of massive international tech company called me out of the blue or like they set up a meeting and they were like, hi, we love your work. We've seen it. We want to get into, um, uh, short content and we want to win awards. Um, so if we gave you a big, if we gave you a big budget, um, do you think you could win us an award? And I was like, I was like, yes, I definitely can do that for you. Um, Just for actually, anyone else listening, this never happens to anybody. Well, well, but also, but then, but that, so then I called Trayvon back, and all of a sudden we're completely galvanized, and we're like going, 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 right. and then they just. I mean, they replied a couple few more times, and then eventually they just stopped replying. So oh no, uh, yeah, they just never did it. So then, but they, uh, but which meant that we were sort of. It, but that's that's the the grand version of what happened quite a lot of times, which is that we were just, we just like we're like we're just doing this. This just has to happen, and the right, world, the yeah. universe kind of just kept rallying around us. Like we 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 had a we had a dream cast, and then like one point it was like, can you shoot in two weeks? And we're like, that's insane, but okay, we'll do it. <laughs> and then that cast fell apart, and then we had to find some new people. But you know, and then the cast we got was better. And I mean, to, to your point about Joey as an everyman as well, just just to take a moment to really sing his praises, you know, so Trayvon calls me, he's like, okay, so what do you think about Joey Badass? I'm like, I have no idea who that is. <laughs> um, and so, but I went and watched him and Joe saw his videos and his performances on television. And, he, and he's, you know, he's, he's, he chose the name Joey Badass for a reason. I mean, the guy's, you know, he's cool and he's tough and he's full of swagger and cocky and he's amazing. Um, but that wasn't what the role called for. The role called for a, a shy, slightly awkward, sweet guy who yeah. just wanted to, 
He was like it, a bit overwhelmed by the girl he'd been with and wanted to go home to his dog. And, and, and it was so, it's so endearing. He's so vulnerable. Right. It's just great. Yeah. And it was and it was such an amazing thing for him because he's never played any. He's never that's never been asked of him before. Clearly, like he'd never. And on the first day, first day we start off with a lot of the cop stuff, but the second day was the stuff opened with him and Zaria naked in bed, and it was the very cute stuff at the beginning. And it took us a little bit of time for him to clue into it, but the, he just something at one point he's like, "Oh, you want this? Oh, cool. Then I got you." And then he after that he just every take he just nailed. And so it, he's a real that guy's like that guy's a well, real. Zaria is fantastic too. She totally controls the room and him. Um, and she's a wise ass. It's, it's a <laughs> fantastic character. Wow, wow. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's so hard. I, I uh, many, uh, I, as you can tell from the gray hair, uh, I've been around for a while. So uh, I, the first, I also started making shorts and it's, it's a very difficult thing. It's a, it's a, as I said before, to me, it's a, it's a complete art form on its own because it's, it's it's so self-contained. It has to be so concise, um, and it and it and you have to write to it. Um, uh, it's it's you know it, it, you can't sit there and dawdle around in the three act structure. You have to get into it immediately. This movie, it's like I was in. Um, I was in immediately. I because of that first shot. I'm wondering um, because he's vertical. Mm -hmm. Um, and every time we cut back to the bed, it was a great choice. Um, um, it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't think it always happens, but it was, it was like, oh, th something odd is going to happen. It's like, it, it sets you up for like, it draws you in like something odd is going to happen here. Yeah. Just because of that opening shot. It's, uh, it's, it's some really interesting filmmaking. So I, uh, can you talk about that a little? Sure. Yeah. The, um, uh, one of the one of our creative partners on this, one of our is co-producer and our music supervisor, Nick Brew. Um, he uh, he went off one 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 sort of. You night. just went off mic a little bit. I think. I'm sorry, sorry. One of our one of our one of our collaborators basically um, watched every single Groundhog Day movie or TV show that's ever been made. Uh, while, <laughs> while we were um, he like literally like because I thought I'd seen them all because I did I tried to do my homework and then he dug up some some weird ones. Um, and he was like, "There's always a mnemonic. There's always." Like there's like in Groundhog Day, it's the clock that goes to six a.m. and Sunny and Cher, Sunny and Sunny and Cher start playing. There's always a mnemonic. There's always something that tells you that reminds you you're here. And I was like, well, it can't be playful. It's got to be upsetting. It's got to be. It's got to be something that when it gets uncomfortable, it reinforces that. It also can't be so weird that it throws you out. Um, it, you know. So it, it, it. I'm very grateful to you know specific feedback on that. And. Um, um, yeah, so that was that was the that was the, because we weren't going to play a song. We weren't going to do like noise. We were like it had to be visual um, because we want we knew we wanted the room to be quiet that first time and and, and awkward and shy um, and uh, and in a real space. Uh, and so it had to be a visual mnemonic, and that was that was what we resolved. You know, came. came it's uh, it's it's wonderfully done. I I I, uh, I I also like the same reason you're describing it is that it's not um, stylistically intrusive. It actually. Uh, it it feels organic to what's what you're seeing. It's, it feels like a, a uh, like a transitional device, and then you discover it's not, which is what's uh, fantastic about it. The, the uh, it's also beautifully shot. Um, Thank you. Um, who shot Who shot it for you? It's a wonderful uh, director of photography, Jessica Young. Um, yeah, Jess is amazing. Jess is amazing. She's a she's a one woman army. Uh, she <laughs> um, she comes out of the dog space with me. She and I have worked together a lot. Over the last uh, five or six years, we've been all around the world shooting. Uh, we, do, we, we, we do a lot of um, a lot of Nike commercials together, and a lot of uh, we did a we did a feature film for National Geographic in East Africa, in Eritrea, in Kenya, where we did a um, uh, we did a documentary about the, these three marathon runners who tried to run a marathon under two hours, um, and uh, we we lived there for a year together. So I know that woman very very well. <laughs> uh, also, uh, beautifully edited as well. I have to say it. And music also. It's uh, was it uh, um, was it a lot of was it? It must have been very difficult during COVID to actually go and find locations and keep everybody safe and do all of that. Yeah, what we, was we, that like? Well, we were one of the first films to be allowed back into production. Don't so yeah. sag, sag. Um, you know, it, it was all shut down all through the summer. 
Um, I, I remember I was in the middle of production myself. <laughs> so sorry. Um, and so and we heard we would we had the script we had our we had our talent and we heard we heard that it was going to be reopening in a couple of weeks and we're like is that true is that true? Um, and I think it was the week after the stay at home orders were. Um, either lifted or, or change, change, whatever. It, it, it became allowed, we were allowed to do it. SAG gave us permission, but it was also because it was the first week back or the second week back, nobody really knew how to do it yet. So we right. ended up, because we were only a five day shoot and because um, we, uh, we just, we didn't, you know, everybody was being paid uh, be, like barely n n nothing, right? It was a short, short yeah. film. The, 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 the economics of a short film are not, are not, and, and the economics of a film are not this, they're not in the same universe and um but but that meant that safety and security was something that we we were absolutists about because it's like we can't we were very fortunate even by that stage to have all these incredible people supporting us and all the, and we're like gosh we can't we can't we've got to do this so we end up getting we had this the deep nasal tests every single day everybody oh. all, all the face visors <laughs> you know it was it, we look like uh we look like stormtroopers uh and um I mean, uh, it, it, it's hard enough to make a short film because there's never any money yeah. uh, and everyone has to work for free, which means there are huge favors, which right. is great. They'll give you a favor on Saturday, but they're gone by Sunday. Right. Um, now you add COVID to it. Uh, uh, it's, yeah, I, it was, I, it was, it was, I mean, our producer, production team, we, we, we definitely gave them some serious gray hairs. Like they, we, we lost two locations because we, because, uh, we wanted to shoot in the hallway outside the apartment. They're like, no, you can only shoot in the, no one knew what the rules were. So people were making up the rules as they went along. And we, we never fought back. We're like, okay, if those are the rules, and to, you know, so it, it, uh, it was a wild, um, it was, it was, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> it wasn't very, <laughs> um, it was, it was pretty joyless in terms of, uh, um, uh, the, the additional pressure we had we lost two hours in addition to everything else you lose two hours at the beginning of every day because yeah. we, we we couldn't go into the parking lot until call time because everyone had to be you know it's, it just every the basics of, that we understand from a film set were just suddenly thrown up in the air and like you say we weren't able to fix any problems with money so we had to fix them with grace and kindness which Chavon has a bottom as well of I'm less well blessed uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and um but yeah no it, it uh, we like you wrote it in five days, we shot it in five days. It was you shot that in five days. Five days, man. With COVID, because COVID takes a third of your time away at least. Yeah, we oh, were man. It was, we were scrambling. It was to, wow. It's it was a miracle project. To it was, say great, it was yeah. We we we, we um. Like it, it was a, it was very aggressive. Well, I, uh, <laughs> you know, I am humbled. It's uh, oh, that's oh, that's no no that's that's uh, that's. That's very difficult. It was and was it shot in? It was shot in Los Angeles. It was all shot in LA. We shot all of it in downtown. That was one thing. One area we got very lucky. Um, our producers were able to find us. Basically, all the locations were within walking distance of each other, um, mm -hmm. or, or, or near, very very near to. Um, that was why we were able to move at the pace that we were able to move at because that was as long as we could get the talent for. Um, you know, one one you know one thing about this. This is this. I overstated this before we shot it, but it is also slightly true, which is that you know. The one, in addition to the, this concept being a good short film concept, it's also a good short film shooting plan because it's a, it's a lot of the same shots over and over and over again. Yeah, right. Uh, that helps. <laughs> so that, that definitely that definitely was a big like. And initially, I was like, well, they're all going to be slightly different. They're always going to be. And then towards you know, I was like, well, they'll they'll be largely the same. <laughs> also, from a, from a directing standpoint, you're trying to keep all of that in your your head as well. So each time you repeat something, um, you're changing it slightly as well, right? Absolutely. And then there are the things that are the same. I mean, I, it seems like a lot of math, which I've never been good at. Yeah. Um, it was um, what when you had when you finished shooting and you were in in post. Um, did it change? Was did you get everything? I mean, we never get everything we wanted. Um, but were, was it was it was it difficult to to build it in the in the edit room, or were you were you in pretty good shape? I'm gonna I'm gonna praise everyone now. Like this is without a doubt the project. The the you know uh, I've never worked on a project before where the initial vision and the final execution were this close. Not even I've never even I've never even worked I've never worked on one that came within a hundred miles of this one. Uh, not to say that there wasn't a significant you know the the, the fundamental nature of editorial remains right. the fundamental nature of editorial. But you know, I think from a structural point of view, we move the bit where he talks to his dog 
um, uh, but other than that, the structural beats hit where they hit. And like you say, you know, the math, math is not my favorite thing either. And this was a math puzzle. And um, in terms of begging favors and whatnot, the, the uh, script, it was our script supervisor's first ever time doing the script supervisor job. And I'm not saying, Omri, that you could have done better, but you could have done better. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was, that was a, the most thankless job ever. But what, what it did mean that once we put the pieces together, the job wasn't to reimagine, like so much of the time when you put that first cut together, you're like, ah, I've got to rethink. So we had to, we had to, the job was to work, was to make sure the performances were as human as possible. That was, right. the, that was editorial. We were like, you know, and we made a few, um, I, I made a few assumptions uh, going into it that turned out to be wrong in terms of tonally, like, because as you mentioned earlier, there's this very big shift between comedy and, and, and tragedy. And, and um, yeah. we actually initially pushed those things further away from each other and, and made the jolting aspect more, you know, it was, it, they were, it was, they were more pronounced. It was more romantic comedy into tragedy. And then we realized, no, 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 no. This thing is, this thing has to be real. And that became our impost. That became our. our yeah, head. it's very grounded. And that's, that's, I mean, I, the, the, that's the work I love because it feels like life. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and, and, and comedy and tragedy happen side by side. Um, Absolutely. And that's where the music came from as well. We actually sometimes too much tragedy, as as this as this subject is a tragic subject, really. Um, and and when you were as you were uh, as you were finishing it in post, um, you, you, there's also some some wonderful music choices that you made as well. Um, was 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 that uh, pre thought out, or what did it evolve in the in the edit room? The Bruce Hornsby was in the script and from the beginning and we just i just hoped and prayed that you know he would let us use the song because we couldn't afford it i was going to say that's an expensive song isn't it yeah very expensive song i i emailed him personally. iconic too yeah yeah definitely and it was it was definitely on purpose it was chosen on purpose i emailed him personally and begged him to let us use it <laughs> and he, he said yes and wow uh uh very supportive of the cause and uh the the Jill Scott song that's also in there in the car in the police the end of the police car scene is a brand new song um, that you know courtesy of our composer James uh, Poiser uh -huh. roots and uh, the credits song is an original title track uh, for the movie that Joey Badass wrote for the movie. I love I love that uh, that title song. It's fantastic. Yeah, and so it's you yeah. Wrote it's that? All, wow. Outside of Bruce, it's all original. Um, Wow. All new music. Well, Bruce is so great because it's so iconic. Uh, and it, it's it's both uh, uh, ironic and horrible at the same time. Um, yeah, I mean, I chose it because it, it's a song that's, you know, was written the year I was born and mm -hmm. it's still relevant today. And right. it's, it's so, it talks about what I feel like is the through line of the movie up to the end of it is you feel like this is just the way it is. And in reality for us right now, it kind of is, it's, it's, it's just the way things are. But the, the beauty of that song is at the end of the song in the, in the later refrains, he says, that's just the way it is, but don't you believe them? And yeah, that's what's great about it. Yeah. And that's the part where you give, you get hope that it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and that's the, you know, our, our movie ends on that same note of Joey feeling like he's going to go out and, br and break the cycle. And so to me, it felt like it, it tied in together perfectly to take a song that pulled the, the past into the present where it was still, you know, taking place. And for, you know, obviously there are songs that have used Bruce's song as a sample and, you know, the Tupac Changes song, which is one of the bigger ones is where we got our titles, like where Martin found, you know, our, our title in that, in that song. Uh -huh. And it also was our way of connecting those two. So, you know, it's the, the modern Tupac version of the song in our title and it's Bruce's song carrying us through the narrative. And so we felt like that was just an important, uh, music is just so important to me in movies. And, and so I, I felt like when I made that decision very, very early on into the writing, I was hoping and praying we could get that song. We didn't. We didn't really have a plan B, so we were. <laughs> yeah, it really wasn't. Well, well, it, it, in some ways, this is the only way to proceed. <laughs> All right, yeah. you. 
you grab you you grab onto it and you you get everything you want and see if you can put it together. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's a, you you have to be a, a slightly mad I think to do to make a short film and I, to make any film really. But um, it's it's a it's an incredible accomplishment. Um, the the um, now because this, this is a this is a, a really hard subject um, for all of us, and um, and it's a. Uh, it, it, I love the way you 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 personalize it, and because you you're so um, you're so with this character, um, and it's a it's a it's a it's it's what I think um, in in the most powerful way filmmaking can accomplish, um, which is which is to put you in somebody else's shoes and live that life and see what that feels like um, and understand um, maybe you've been wrong or you've been, um, um, you've been uh, closed into your own little tribe or your little world. And it's, uh, I, I, it's an amazing accomplishment because it's, it's, it's on the surface, such a simple um, structure, but it's incredibly complex what you're doing. It's, it's uh, and, I, and I, I'm passing you huge compliments because I absolutely love this movie. Um, do you, are you, are you finding, are you, are you starting to get, um, uh, people who are seeing it, uh, are you starting to get input? Are you starting to get a reaction? Um, has yeah, the audience been tiny to this point or has it been, have you, have you had screenings? Have you gotten feedback? Yeah, I mean, we've had, we've had quite a few screenings and we've sent it out, you know, amongst ourselves to our, our friends and, and spread it out as, you know, as far as we can right now without it being set up somewhere to distribute. And the, the, all the feedback is pretty much the same. I've not gotten, I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing to experience to like make a thing and only get positive feedback from, from everyone. <laughs> it's just like every screening we have, um, you know, the few I've had where people are like can live chat in, in the screening window or whatever, like it's just people in love with what's, what's on the screen, but also like just emotionally taken by it. And you only like, you dream of making something that has that effect on people. And every person we send it to, or we, we share it with, we get this pretty much the same responses. And it, you know, I've worked on so many different shows and, and done so many different things. And I've only really ever worked on, you know, one other show that had that type of, you know, just overwhelming acclaim and beloved, if that's a word, uh, was, which was The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. And because everyone loved Jon Stewart and he yeah. was, you know, America's like newsman for so long. And so that was like one of the only times I can remember working at a place where everywhere you went, everyone you told you worked there or wrote for that show just was, you know, immediately saying its praises. And this is the first time I've ever done anything since then that, you know, it's just been so well received and we like, and it's, it's, you know, with a story that's so complex and so hard to nail with subject matter like this to get that type of feedback is, you know, it, it feels really good because you want people to get the message, not be put off by what you're trying to, to say. Uh -huh. And I mean, I've even, I never would have imagined that there's even been cops who've seen the movie and love it. And that was just where I thought the line was drawn. <laughs> well, it, it, as we were saying before, for me anyway, that um, the, the key to it is, the, is that character because you're, you, you, you absolutely love this guy, right? And it, and you're with him. And we, we've all, unfortunately, at this moment in history, seen all of those things. And um, unfortunately, live um, on video, most of it. And, um, and it's, um, it's heartbreaking. Um, and it's also um, absolutely, I can absolutely relate in a very human way that has nothing to do with politics. It's like I'm relating to that character and what he's going through and I know it happens. And um, 
and that's uh, that, that's a very difficult thing to pull off. So uh, congratulations, you guys. Um, Thank you. Yeah, that was the that was the biggest thing we wanted people to do is to see the humanity in Carter and not what you know emotional or political context you brought to what he was experiencing, but to just feel what it felt like as a person to go through those type of things. And it seems like we've we've been doing it. We did a good job at it, it seems. No, it's, it's right down to his profession, which is how can you not like a cartoonist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a guy who just wants to draw it and have fun. He just wants, yeah. Draw some pictures and hang out with his dog. He's lovely. Yeah, hang out with his dog. He loves his dog. I mean, you know, the old pet the dog theory, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fantastic, fantastic work. <laughs> Um, I, I, uh, I, I send you great congratulations. Um, 30 years ago, I made a short, um, and it was uh, as uh, painful, but not as, um, not as important for a moment in history as this one is. And so uh, I, I, uh, I applaud you. Um, congratulations, you guys. Thank you so much, Dean. And so much. you've made some very, very important movies to a lot of people. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> for all of that. Um, the, the real question is, uh, eventually, um, everybody's got to see this. you got to. Well, that's one weird thing I was going to say is that the, um, because we, it was five months from idea to, to the, the day we uploaded it to the Academy website was the last day of submission. Um, of course yeah. Um, yeah and uh you know the drill um but also it was you know that's the bizarre thing because we it's a unique thing to this year this movie's never had a premiere this movie's only, only been seen in, in private screenings or people we've, sh we've shown, shared it with because this year we were able to qualify because we would have screened it we would have had a premiere in a cinema but they were all closed because in, in a strange way this is exactly the moment when this movie has to go out it's exactly, exactly the moment exactly so we're hoping you know we're hoping for good news in a couple of weeks um, and then I think, you know, we will partner with, it, with, with the right distributor to get it. Like we just, that's what we want as well. We just want people to see it. We don't, there's no, that's the love, that's the lovely thing about a short is that there's no real financial ambition. This is not like, no one's getting rich off this. It's like, we just, we made, Believe me, I, I made almost a hundred dollars off my short 30 years ago, <laughs> which I profit shared with the crew. <laughs> that's like checks for a dime. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, Jeff, that's Jeff Bezos levels compared to where we're currently sitting. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, but the um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, one thing I do hope to, I would love to see this. You know, I'm, I'm praying that, that we'll get to see this in the cinema one day with the with an audience. You know, like I would, I would die to have that experience to see what it felt like in a room full of people experiencing it for the first time. I, I had the same experience because it's so beautifully made and shot that I bet it in a cinema it's absolutely gorgeous. So. I mean, <laughs> 